Welcome to the Ultimate Coach Podcast, Conversations from Being, inspired by the book, The Ultimate Coach, written by Amy Hardison and Alan Thompson. Join us each week with the intention of expanding your state of being, and your experience will be remarkable. Remember, this is a podcast about being. It is a podcast about you. To explore more deeply, visit theultimatecoachbook.com. Now, enjoy today's conversation from B. And welcome back. We're here live again with Gary Marlow for another episode, which I'm really excited to uh, to get started. If you haven't heard the first one, uh, I really encourage you to get back and, and listen to it. It was a beautiful conversation we had about fatherhood. And um, I was just speaking to Gary now, and he just uh, opened up and said, this is a conversation that will really ignite something in the listener, something about self-forgiveness and the power of creation something along those lines. And I'm really excited to explore that with you, um, Gary. So firstly, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. It's um, something I create great enjoyment from just sharing my experience with an open heart. So thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gary. So there there are a couple of places uh, I'd like to take this interview and this conversation, but just at the very beginning, I know you've just recently come back from Mumbai where you also got to share the stage and, and had a very, very, very powerful experience there. One of the things that came out, you know, recently in a, in a conversation was this idea about being someone who plants seeds of being. I'd love to, I'd love for you to share a bit more about that. And and what does that mean for you? My being, which is created daily. I get to share myself in my own particular way as Gary, part of divinity, part of this great universal experience that we all share where the foundation is love and I get to individuate my experience of life as a creation. And within that, I get to plant the seeds of Gary and how I see life as a possibility everywhere I go. I get to plant the seeds of love, compassion, understanding, a feeling of aliveness, a feeling of joy, a feeling of equanimity with all of life, even when life does not feel the way I think it should or I would prefer. And in the planting of seeds, there is a connection that is created for relationship and relationship Mm. is the foundation to anything that wants to be created in the world. So what is the action of planting seeds? What does that actually look like? If I could see you planting seeds, what would I be seeing? Uh, It's kindness to the barista at Starbucks. It's openness to when my son may not be having the best of days. Mm -hmm. It is a willingness to be with what is and be loving. It is, it is doing this podcast. It is sharing my experience. It is sharing who I am. This isn't just for coaches, but if you're a coach and you share your being, you share in service, people will come to experience you. People will come to experience what you do in your life, in your profession. But more importantly, they get to experience who you're being. Right. So, you know, what I'm hearing, Gary, is we're actually always planting 
seeds of being, we're either aware of the kind of seeds we're planting or, or we're unaware. Yes. To me, what I'm, what I'm hearing, you know, is, uh, it's funny. I actually walked past yesterday. There was a, uh, I don't smoke cigars, but there's this like ad for Davidoff. And it says, we only choose 10% of seeds because we source only the finest from birth. And uh, out of the 22,000 seeds, here are the 220 or the 2,200, or, or it was it was just a picture of seeds and a cigar. I don't know that that's just coming to my mind when you say that, yeah. because that's really what, that's really what it is. Like it's, it's whatever seeds that you yeah. plant are the fruit that will be created. Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. So in any given moment, who you're being is activating the seeds that you're planting and nurturing so it's it's planting seeds nurturing seeds and growing what would you say like growing as in growing yourself um i would say in the relationships that we foster yeah the farmer if there's a drought it finds a source of water to mm -hmm. water the plants it does little things to nurture the plants. Within the context of my work with Steve, Steve talks about his business model is planting seeds, nurturing seeds, being with people. Yeah. Not for any other reason, not for him to work with him. Right. That's a byproduct. But to create the seeds of being within people. And I've never seen anyone give so freely of his time to people yeah. to talk to people to share that's beautiful so yeah. within the realm of coaching or consulting you can put it this way but if you anybody if you're a banker and you plant the seeds of caring guess what people are going to want to do business with you i go to this training place here in tokyo these guys don't speak english very well but i go every week i get an email from a trainer, and I don't always get the same trainer, but it's a trainer from three weeks ago. You are scheduled tomorrow. And he writes it in Japanese. I do a Google Translate. I'm looking forward to training you again. I haven't seen you in two weeks. We're going to keep in mind this, that, the little injury you have here. Guess what that makes me feel? It makes me okay. feel like, oh my God, that's, that's, I'm really glad that I go to this place. He planted the seeds. I was so happy to get this email for 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. This guy knows about planting seeds. Yeah. This is the ultimate service that I've learned from C Steve. And it's really cool how you say it's not like a strategy, right? It's not like an, in order to, I'm going to plant these seeds. This It's just as an expression of who you are as an expression of it, and it could be it could be that but it falls flat yeah what happens say more about that what does that well, mean it could be that stuff it with, flat. well yeah well if, if you're doing stuff in order to get stuff people right. know it the whole internet yeah. is filled with funnels this that hey how's it going well I don't know you and you're going to be asking me this, that, and giving me something for what? Yeah. The whole thing is in the planting seeds, create a relationship. Yeah. Create a loving relationship. Take time to be with someone. Take time to be with your family. For my kids, I take time to be with my kids. I'm planting the seeds of the rest of their lives. If I'm saying whatever, do this, do that, just in order to get some screen time or whatever it is, I'm planting the seeds of love, sowing the seeds of love. I am love. In your in your day today, Gary, I know I've we've we've had some com really beautiful conversations around this. But what happens when you're not planting seeds of love? What happens when you notice that you know there's resentment, anger? 
and you notice yourself being unkind in a way that you're not particularly proud of what does that happen and, and what's that like what i will do is anytime there is something that comes up that is not loving mm -hmm. or that i'm retreating or that i'm hiding from a situation i will take time outside of my day to be with it yeah so let, let's get really practical here like yes. in, in your um in your day to day if you are faced with someone who's being very judgmental and you're noticing yourself being triggered what is a way that you would deal with that in the moment i will see that there is something heating up inside of me mm -hmm. i will follow the breath i will be with what is occurring and my creation at the beginning of the day will have me be very aware if this is occurring. So before it's a raging fire, I will be able to be with what's occurring in a very powerful way. And I catch myself before I get into the fire. Right. It's like they say, you, you put a lobster and you slowly heat it up. It's not going to know what's coming on. I'm the lobster those gradations that you're turning something and I'll jump out of the pot before I'm engulfed in, you know, a boiling pot that kills me. The very interesting part to this question is what do I do with that which has occurred? So I will sit with what occurred or mm -hmm. what was triggering or what was hitting up against something. And I will see where am I being judgmental? Where am I being unkind? Where is a habit that I haven't been aware of that I can sit with mm. and feel the full effect of and do the work, which I'll describe when we're talking about the document in a bit. Well, and I think let, what you're yeah. asking is, and I think what you're asking though is, what happens if you're in the thick of it and you forget? You get angry, you get upset, you want to retreat. In that moment that I know I come back to my mm -hmm. document and I sit within this and I can come back to my senses immediately. An example was my son was acting out the other week. The last day of school, they went back to their next grade today my wife's like, I can't handle this. Deal with him. And I just brought him into this room and I sat. And I said, we have to get you ready for school, but you can't be doing this. So I had a choice in that moment, being hardcore dad with him or actually being compassionate dad. I chose in that moment to not do or be how I might have been. Mm -hmm. And in that act of compassion, something shifted with him to open up about a situation in school where he hadn't told us that there's times that he feels bullied and ostracized. And in the last two weeks, we've just taken the time to be with him. Yeah. That was a concrete decision. So let's say if I would have gotten angry, I'd say, listen, I, I apologize. I did wrong. It's mm -hmm. like anything. If I yeah. do something, I will own it. And I'm yeah. teaching him. Either way, I'm teaching him. Oh, I'm human. This will happen. Or I'm compassionate. Yeah. The key work here, though, is who am I being with what is occurring? And how am I an active participant in what is happening? And this is the seeds that I'm planting. These mm. are the seeds that I'm planting but I will never leave something unturned where there is something hitting up against. It just provides me a depth to something I haven't looked at about myself that is running me as an undercurrent mm -hmm. that I can forgive myself for judging yeah. myself to experience fully the pain that lives somewhere from some experience years ago that I can't even recall. We root that up. And I'm always coming back home 
to not who I thought it was, not to my reactions, not to my beliefs, but this open field of possibility that I am not my judgments, I am not my sensations, I am not my emotions. I am something deeper and greater than that, combined to in tandem with something greater. Thank you. Yeah, so one one of the things I heard you say as well is how you create yourself every morning. And how do you create yourself every morning? I wake up in stillness and I listen. When I open my eyes, I listen to what is occurring, what thoughts are occurring, what dream did I wake up from, what is occurring within my body, mind, and heart. And I breathe into it and I see what's there. I listen to something greater than myself and I listen for what are the questions to ask myself of this day before I even commence breathing into my document. And my document is I am infinite stillness, born of ease and flow. I sit within that. I bathe within that. I'm pure connection to the all-powerful. I just sit within that, knowing that there's something. And I don't know what that something is, but there's a connection greater than myself. I'm pure connection to that. I always get what I want. I get what I want before asking, always. And a lot of times what I get is not what I might be appreciating at this time. This is brand new in my document. It just was yeah. created two days ago because of something that came up. Yeah, yeah. It's like you get what you need, which may not be I, what your desire is. I get what I get. You get what you get, yeah. And I, I get what I get. It's like my kid says, you get what you get. Don't be upset. Yeah. But I always get what I want, even if I don't appreciate it. Yeah. Even if I don't want it, I still get what I want. I still do, and I create from it. Yeah. So that's new. That wasn't there. Yeah, that's a beautiful distinction. Ago. Yeah, I love that. I'm seeing the freshness before of it that was, as well. Yeah. Right? Before it was, I'm pure connection to the all-powerful. And I get what I want. So let's now let's just, it's yeah, let's yeah. Just, let's just look at that because yeah. I know you are someone who really lives by your document. You're someone who I've also heard you speak around having spent an entire year with Steve Hardison working on your document. The whole document process is not outlined in the book of being in the ultimate coach the, for, for, for a reason. And I know I've heard a lot of different versions of different ways of people creating the document. And I would love for this conversation to, to enlighten people a little bit more about how you created your document. What was the process? And the fact that it took a whole year and still today, there's still new things that are being added to your document yeah would you be willing to open up and share about that i'd be willing to share my experience and i'd also be willing to say i don't know what anyone else who's worked with steve's experience might be so it might be the same might be a bit different my experience is in my first session with steve to talk about non-powerful listenings what are our non-powerful listenings about ourselves? So Steve shared with me, think of someone you really don't like. And just imagine someone says their name. What are you going to be hearing? How will you be hearing stuff? So if you don't yeah. like the leader of your country, you hear the name, you are going to have an energy. Mm -hmm. You hear about something you love. I hear yeah. about my wife. I will have a powerful listening. Yeah. Anytime I think about my wife and kids, I have a powerful listening. So this is the first thing he taught me. And he said, what so, you will be doing. Go ahead. What came up for you in that moment? Do you remember who was the person? I do. 
Would you be willing to share that just to make it more real? No. Would you be willing to share what is the non-useful thinking that came just to make this, just just to, to understand oh, kind of... Then all you got to do is yeah. if you are... A re, if you are a political, if mm -hmm. your political bent is on the left, think yeah. of someone on the right or vice versa. You're going to yeah. get it very clear. Think yeah. about someone who did you wrong. Yeah. Think about like something. You're going to get that. that yeah. Yeah. So you, so you, you, you yeah. have all these, yeah. All, all, all these ideas and assessments that are very negative. Of that person. Of that person. So I'll, I'll. So, let's let's take all it, you're doing like, this person is a jerk yeah so so you, you so, all... so I, that that would be like an unuseful thinking right yeah so all so you what... do is yeah you take all of your non-powerful listings about mm -hmm. yourself yeah i had pages and pages and pages and pages one of them is I always get something, but I never get what I really want. That was a judgment I had about myself. Beautiful. I get okay. Yeah. yeah. But I never get what I really want. Yeah. That was one. So, so the so, beauty yeah. that I got to experience is my first session between my first and second session was something like two months or eight weeks between sessions because he was out Mm -hmm. in england or wherever he was at the time so all i got to do for eight weeks with no soothing of meditation or anything is sit within mm. every time yeah. i felt for that one thing or and i had pages of these to sit with every time i felt i didn't get what i wanted yeah it was never good enough so you got really, bathed yeah, within you, you, those feelings. You got really present to all of those non-useful judgments and thoughts. And then what? I relived them. You lived you relived them. Yeah. What was that like? Hell. <laughs> yeah. Well, for how long? Two months. So what was going on internally with you in those two months? Hell very confronting everything i came face to face with every trauma samskara everything in my life yeah that i never took the time to look at that i put aside that i did with this this is the pure work that i did with steve and maybe if i would have seen him in two weeks i wouldn't have gotten the full brunt and effect mm -hmm. but i relived every single one of my rejections every single one of any non-powerful listening or judgment i just sat waiting for them to appear so imagine if you've done a vipassana retreat where you're meditating for 10 hours i told my wife i said i really won't be much use to you or anyone else during this time when I'm doing this work, I need to be cloistered. I need to be by myself. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me, but there will be something coming out of this. And so you took some solitude. You were with yourself. You just noticed you wrote them down, pages and pages. And relived, and every, relived one of them. every one of them. And then what? Then I went to see Steve for mm -hmm. my next session. And we took 10 of them. And in the two hours or two and a half hours, I think it was we did, we took longer during that session. He sat with me through the main ones and sat with me as I was in agony going through describing painfully step by step everything about this. Yeah. So within the one, I never get what I want. And I describe, yeah. I get this, but I don't get what I want. I get something, but I get like the hand me downs to life. And I get this, like I just never really ever get. Yeah. And then I said these words I forgive myself for judging myself as never getting what I really want. 
And I went through every time that I had this judgment and I forgave myself for judging myself for this, for this, for this, for this, for this, for this. And it was just minutes that seemed long, long minutes. Then I took a breath and I said, for the truth is, and that's where I create what I want, became my new reality. I don't get what I want, like a poor man, like a beggar. Mm. I create what I want. That became it. And since then, it's morphed from my work to I'm pure connection to the all-powerful and I create what I want to I create what it wants. So this has transformed in the years since the document. Yeah. I'm coming to the place where I don't create what I want. I create what it wants. And I get what I want without asking. So that's the next part that just mm -hmm. it's morphed in the years. I'm pure connection to the all-powerful powerful i create what it wants i always get what i want always and sometimes it might not be exactly what i thought i wanted so mm -hmm. that's the that's in there that i'm able to take the gold in anything that i'm given so that one part of my document is five years in the making it's a living, breathing part of me. So in the instant that I forgave myself for judging myself as not getting what I want, and I declared, I create what I want, my whole life shifted. In that, there is no more not getting what I want or getting second hands. I create what I want. Man, that shifted for me within the work with Steve. That shifted my whole understanding. I create what I want. Then it shifted. I create what it wants, what the mm -hmm. universe wants. Is, yeah. Wants. And then came in, I get what I want without even asking. I'm given what I want without even asking. That was That came from another session with Steve. I always get what I want without even asking. Mm -hmm. I'm so powerful that I get what I want without asking. By creating what it wants, this is this is this is this creating very, this daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very different to sort of this idea of manifesting and asking for what you want and then getting what you want. Nothing to do with what it wants. Um, for example, how much income you want to be making in the year and just speaking that out and making that as a, a like a declaration or even a um like an affirmation or a manifestation whatever you want to call it excuse me <clears throat> but you know what i'm hearing from you is very different to that it's really i get what i want and what i want is what it wants and, and that's, that's directly awesome. from that's directly from yeah working with Steve after the pandemic when I could start flying with to see him again, where we co-created listening. So remember, I said in the morning, first thing I do is listen to it. Yeah. It informs me what to ask. And then from there, I co-create with it. Yeah. It, there's and this really stems from my work within the way of mastery, creation from surrender, acceptance, and allowance. I I love all of life. I create from surrender, acceptance, from and allowance to all things. I'm not I'm not in control of this show anymore. And it's not that I don't have preferences. It's not that I'm not Gary. There's things that I like and I don't like. But I put those in check and I check within who I am and what it wants and I morph them together. And I've always got the full power of the universe behind me. Always. Always. What is something that Gary Mahler wants 
that you are creating right now? The eyes of love that sparkle all of the time. I want the eyes of God, the guy, the eyes of love hmm. that are loving no matter what. I love that. I want yeah. that. I want that. I want that. What I experienced with Byron Katie yeah. and I experienced with Steve Hardison. Yeah. Is there something you want outside of that in the world of form, in the physical world? that just like that's a desire that that you are also creating you know to I'm planting the seeds for the Mahler International Coaching Studio which is one aspect of, mm -hmm. of it is being built in Vancouver as we speak it's my home yeah and it's also a place where people will be coming because there's a yeah. beautiful huge 34 foot by 12 foot deck where people will be coming Mm -hmm. where they will be able to come and spend time, not stay there. It's not big enough. I'm not making a, a albergo or a hotel. I'm, I'm making a place where people can come, but that's yeah. being built. There is within my business 2.0 of what I'm building. It's emerging this year as I'm basically on hiatus in Japan and it's coming to me. It's coming to me every day. And 2.0 is a grander, larger vision of my business where the work that I do on Zoom or on calls like this will be a smaller part and the greater part will be one, two, four, five days with me. Mm -hmm. This is what I want. This is what I see that it wants and wants to emerge. And it's not been done before, not in the way that I'm being called to create it. I get that. Yeah. How are you creating that? What Gary Mahler wants versus creating what it wants. How do you navigate through those two? Because ultimately you want that to be seamless but are there times when there are sort of conflicting wants between what Gary Mahler wants and what it wants? And how do you navigate that? Um, that's my stillness every morning. Mm -hmm. And it has a plan for me. Yeah. And I really believe that everything that comes up as an obstacle to the eyes of love to everyone I meet, yeah. Yeah. if I work on that, de facto, I am working, planting the seeds to what I want in my business. I defer to what my work is, and I don't differentiate. If my work is, there is an unloving way of being that I am in. Mm -hmm. I look at that. And I do my work and I go deep and I forgive myself for judging myself. The, the latest one that I'm working with that became apparent through various things that have happened in my hiatus. When people treat me in a way that I am not really fond of, mm -hmm. or I'm in a situation that I am not fond of, I retreat, I surrender, I separate. That is, you want to know the real Gary? That's the real Gary right now. I have a meeting with someone and I don't like them. Then you withdraw. I don't want you to be part of my life anymore. So source tells me, Gary, if you want the thing that you want, unless you look at that, forget about it. Your work mm -hmm. is this. Unless you have, and for me, the, the number one thing is the eyes of love. So if I do this work within that, and there mm. is no separation, I forgive yeah. myself for judging myself as separation. Every time there was separation, every time when I was growing up within the faith that my parents had us do, and then I didn't like it, and I just 
said, I don't want it anymore. Leave it. Like anytime I'm going through all of that. It is an extremely courageous and at the same time challenging way of living for Gary Marla. It's hell. Because it means you have to put aside a lot of the expectations that you and other people have of yourself for the greater good. And and it 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 mm-hmm. is, yeah, it's it's very I really recognize that as a very bold and courageous way of living. And this is all done within the yeah. within the sanctity and the sanctum, the inner sanctum yeah. of my heart. Why do you say so it's hell? I, because it is hell. What say what what live what, within yeah to, to well, live with, just imagine any traumatic experience that you've had. Yeah. Just imagine. So for me, growing mm-hmm. up, we were part of a Christian church. Yeah. And there were so many times that I was just being Gary as a teenager and I was shunned or I was made to feel wrong or I was made and it felt horrible. Yeah. I relive that. And then when I was like, well, I don't like you. I'm not going to let you in because you hurt me. Yeah. And I didn't even know that that was still an undercurrent. Is there a time where withdrawing is a wise thing to do? I'm not talking about... I'm talking about an inner stance Mm -hmm. that is a cowering, that is a protective defense mechanism. Right. And there's, there's nothing wrong and there's not... There's nothing wrong with if people are creating boundaries, nothing wrong with that. But within my heart, that's the part that I'm talking about, where we right. think within the privacy of our own heart, there is no privacy in our own heart. The work of Ho'oponopono or anything within me is if I have something where I have closed my heart off to someone because they're not the right ideology or they haven't been and I don't really care to see them again. So I'm all for, if someone is abusive, you create a boundary and you put them there. But what I'm talking about is the inner work of, I can't be with you. You can't be a part of this. And that's, I think that really makes sense. But within my heart, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about stuff that isn't the major stuff. I'm talking about petty stuff that I'll just put someone aside because I don't like how they make me feel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So it's really confronting to seeing what's the inner stance that I'm living in. And energy and power to see through things that most people can't see through, to be with things that most people can't, That's new to my document as of yesterday from waking up at 2 a.m. and feeling all of the things. And I created this. The things that felt like hell are no longer hell. I'm going to read it because this is new. I am that. I am infinite stillness born of ease and flow. I'm pure connection to the all-powerful and I create what it wants. I receive what I want before asking for it always and often in ways I might not yet appreciate. I'm generous and warm-hearted. I am freedom. I am playful and patient with all of life. I am love coming from love. I am forgiveness and understanding, especially for myself. I am free. I'm free to be love and loving no matter what. I am free to be masculine energy that sees the unseeable as an able and is able to be with things that are difficult to be with. Because I create the world in this way, I take empowered action and I am fearless, bold, and courageous. No matter what happens inside of me or outside of me, I remain unmoved and worry-free. Nothing moves or shakes me, even when I'm shaken and stirred. 
I am filled with joy and I delight in all of life. It ain't nothing till I call it. Those are the first two lines of my document and every part of that, there has been a shadow side yeah. that has been an undercurrent running me that doesn't anymore. And when something comes up, like I'm sharing with you, I will mm -hmm. sit with every time that I felt in a way that isn't loving or having not been loved and separates, that's my new one. And it's hurtful. But as I declare my new document, it's not hurtful anymore. I've sat through it, forgiven myself mm. for judging myself as separate, as surrendering, as not being who I am. And I'm free. I'm free to be loving and love. That's really beautiful, Gary. Thank you for really sharing that that process with us and taking us through, you know, the journey of hell that you went through and this, you know, beautiful creation and living, being someone who's also living this document. The last words I heard was, can you repeat that last sentence of your document? I'm filled with joy and I delight in all of life. It ain't nothing until I call it. That really made me think, it ain't nothing until I call it. What does that mean? So when I say it ain't nothing until I call it, anything that I call something becomes what it is to me. That part of my document was created when I was having a session with Steve and it was right before Corona hit and I had to readjust some travel arrangements because of the airlines I like to plan in advance. And then Steve tells me, by the way, um, I won't be able to do this or this. I don't know what it was, but I was really kind of upset and he'd never seen me upset and I needed some time to cool down in my session. And we created, it ain't nothing to like call it something. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I really see that. And the story gets even more interesting because I got to forgive myself for judging myself Mm -hmm. and everything that I had rescheduled or been upset about, I had to cancel because Corona hit. So there was a lot of reasoning for your upset, a justification and validation. And so it ain't nothing until I call it. It ain't something until I call it. Whatever whatever the, the way you phrase that is, you know, the way that you language things creates a reality in which you then have to live into. Yep. And so that way of being of using like language, I mean, this is, this is, um, this can look like, oh, you're just, you're just using words to, to try and like make something. Actually, what we so were doing good. in that session was yeah. what we think shoots chemistry throughout the body. So when he said what he said, and I said, I don't want to spend my time talking about this in my session. I pay a lot of money for this. I was, that was a reality. That was shooting chemistry. I needed to take a breather. Mm. And oddly enough, we worked through this and then we did this process and that became part of my document. And the beautiful thing is this, is that my wife was with me at the time and we stopped on the way to the airport and then she was doing her shopping and I, th we thought we would get to the airport in time, but somehow there was a traffic jam 
and I'm sitting within it ain't nothing till we call it. And I might be missing my flight. Mm -hmm. And I'm in there just saying, of course, this is going to be happening because it ain't nothing till I call it. And I'm breathing with it. And my wife knows the story. And she said, finally, during that session, Steve got to see some real part of you. And I remember the cab driver was just amazing. He was like, I don't know if we'll make it, but I'll do my best. And I remember we, were, we got to the airline. And then the lady says, um, you can't check in your luggage. And we're like, oh, but we got these two beautiful bottles of wine. She goes, yeah, well, you can't take them across. It ain't nothing till you call it. I hope you like wine. These are really, really good wines. <laughs> These are for you. And then she helped us make our flight. Hmm. So that's where it came in. So I had to sit within that session. Yeah. All of the frustration of having to, having redone my travel arrangements, then having to be that way with Steve, mm -hmm. and then having to tell Steve, listen, um, I can't fly into your country. I won't be able to make all of these things. Sorry, I was an asshole in the session to you. He's like, yeah, no problem. It ain't nothing till you call it. So what I'm sharing with you is the nitty gritty yeah. of how my document has yeah. been created. Yeah, that, 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 that's amazing. At what point do you call it? Oh, I call it whatever I call it. So you get to create it through how you call it. I get to create it how I call it. I get, I get to create mm -hmm. a pain in the ass or I get to create whatever it is that's in front of me. Do you find comfort? And calling it a pain in the ass sometimes. Well, sometimes it is because <laughs> I'm creating it that way. Yeah. There's a term that's, uh, you know, calling a spade a spade. And, um, you know, just acknowledging that it is a pain in the ass. Is, I, I, I know, really don't want to do any spiritual bypass or try and make things or sing Kumbaya when it's not there. Right. But this is where I will see how I focus on something and that shoots the chemistry in my body. Yeah, yeah, and I see that. It robs me mm. because my I am, my I want that is the eyes of love. So mm. life will give me the quickest, most direct route to that through things that I don't like. And how am I going to be with them? How am I going to breathe through them? How am I going to create self-forgiveness? Gary, thank you so much for this um, really rich, rich conversation. I feel you've, you know, got to really take us into the world of what it means to nurture these seeds of being to plant the seeds to grow them to be them how can people who want to know more about you and your work get in touch with you or if there's something someone wants to share with you from what they've heard in this conversation what's the best way for them to uh, to, to connect with you definitely if they want to learn a bit about me and see my website garymuller.com gives a pretty good feel for who I am to contact me restart at garymuller.com is a way that always gets to me if you're on Facebook Gary Mahler and you find the little icon of my son and I on a beach in Hawaii that's me people reach out to me there um Thank you so much for the invitation to just share how my document was created. I won't say that it is the definitive way. It's just, as I mentioned, the way that I created it with Steve. But the one thing that I'm quite certain of, reliving 
the painful parts mm -hmm. that we are experiencing, then seeing how that listening shapes our world and then really being clear about, I forgive myself for judging myself. I'm not forgiving myself for the act of what I did. I forgive myself for judging myself as rejected. Mm. And going through all of the times that you felt rejected, there is a cleansing that occurs. Oh, yeah. That, that is gone. When I say I am free, I am free. Oh, I yeah. Am free. Yeah. I am free from the judgment of other people or self-judgment. When I say I am free to be loving and love to everyone I meet, that means definitive within me. Mm. I don't need to cut people off within myself or I don't need to separate myself. I don't need to become weak. I don't need to become a victim. I am free to inhabit the full essence of my gariness in conjunction with the full weight of the universe. Mm. Then my mind is quiet. My heart is still. I am informed of what to say, what not to say, what to do and how to do it. And it stems from my I want that of the eyes of love that sparkle to everyone I meet. I plant the seeds of that. People like what I say on this podcast. I like what you have. Can you show me to make my own version of it? That's how I create my business. I don't do it any other way. I do it with the barista. I do it with the people I meet and I'm congruent and I'm authentic about my inauthenticity. I love being a human being, all that that entails. And in my work, I am loving the individuated gariness so much that I can share freely in a powerful way that actually transforms people who hear my words. <laughs> it's so cool. Gary, thank you for infusing the sparkling eyes of love for your <laughs> presence into this conversation, into this podcast. Um, I love how you describe the whole journey and the process and grateful for your share today. Thank you. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for the being movement that takes the mystery of this and can just see how I see it mm -hmm. and create for oneself a way of being that comes from a depth of forgiveness of self-judgment that can power infuse documents into a way of being that transform lives and the world. This is the power. Yeah, I get oh. that. I really get that. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, Gary, and a beautiful time with your family. And uh, do keep us posted on how the Project Vancouver develops and when it's ready to receive the people that it wants it to receive. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you know someone who would benefit from today's conversation, please share this podcast with them. Also, we invite you to visit theultimatecoachbook.com so you can continue your personal exploration of being. There you will find links to join our wonderful community, get your own copy of The Ultimate Coach Book, and more. Simply go now to www.theultimatecoachbook.com. That's www.theultimatecoachbook.com. The link is also available in the show notes. We appreciate your support. Be blessed. Be used.